Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to part nine in the current series, Aqaid and Contemporary Issues. Just a reminder to all of you that you can purchase the DVDs of the classes organized by Stanmore Jaffries here in the ELC by going to the, um, the AV room in the gents on the ground floor or going to the desk in the ladies section. The DVDs are priced five pounds and each DVD contains two parts of a series. You can buy DVDs of this current series and there's also copies available of the marriage series which was held uh, earlier this year. Tonight, Sheikh Shamali's topic is about resurrection, Qiyamat. Please welcome him with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillah <laughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-adiyya al-adhim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى آله التيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره This is our first session on the resurrection and the ninth session in the series that we had on Aqaid we have been trying to address briefly each and uh, every principle of religion. And Alhamdulillah, we have covered four of them up to now. So inshallah, today and then in the next session, we'll cover the belief in the resurrection. According to the Quran, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only creator of the world and the belief in resurrection are shared by all divine religions and these constitute the core of the message of all the prophets. In 12 places in the Quran the belief in the hereafter or the last day is mentioned right after the belief in God. In 12 places. It means that the belief in the resurrection and the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come together. And these two, along with the belief in the prophethood, the need for divine revelation, salamun alaikum, are considered to be principles of any kind of religion, any kind of divine religion. This is why we call these three usul din as we said in the beginning. So you don't find any difference among the prophets in emphasize on the resurrection. But what we find today, of course, is different among the books which exist today. The Quran is very unique in the emphasis on the resurrection. The other books, you know, that we have, Old Testament or New Testament, you know, even in the way that religious people from other traditions you know, articulate their faith, although they believe in the resurrection, but it's not as outstanding as in the Quran. The Quran is very unique. You always find the emphasis on remembrance of the death, remembrance of the day of judgment, remembrance of the fact that we would be rewarded or punished, we are recountable. In maybe you find no single page of the Quran unless there is something about this. I don't want to say exactly, but it's very much distributed. And some people say maybe one third of the Quran is in a way or another related to the idea of the resurrection. So it's a very important part of Islamic faith, but originally it was the same for all divine religions. In 
those religions which may not have original uh, link to the prophets, or at least we don't know if they have, sometimes you don't find the idea of the resurrection. But you find something similar. For example, in some religions, you find the idea of reincarnation, or tanasuch, which means that they believe that human beings, depending on what they do, depending on what they act, what they behave, and also what they believe, they would be treated differently. But because they don't have clear vision of the resurrection, so they find to sort out everything in this world. So they say, for example, if someone dies, then again he would be resurrected, either in the form of human being, or sometimes in the form of animal, or sometimes in the form of maybe plants. And he or she would experience different life, but based on what he has done in the previous life. So for example, if he has been a good person, acting as a good person, then he would have a happy life, prosperous life. Otherwise, he would suffer. So it means that deep in their mind, they find it necessary that the world, the creation must not be indifferent to what people do. There must be some kind of reward or punishment. But because either their ideas are changed throughout the time, or because these are human you know, way of thinking, so they didn't get the idea of resurrection right, but somehow they have some kind of idea about uh, the resurrection. But for us, this is very clear that when people die, certainly they will not perish. Certainly they will not cease to exist. This is just a transition from one kind of life to another kind of life. But there is no chance of coming to this world again except in rare cases. There are rare cases in which the Quran tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought people back to this dunya. Like for example, the people who were revived by Jesus. Allah Nabi and Awali wa salam. So because this is one of the miracles of Jesus that he was bringing back the people, of course not many people, just few people, to this world. So those people had the experience of coming again to this world. Or about the story of the prophet Ermia or uh, whoever, because it's controversial, who was that when he passed a village, past the village and saw that the village is empty from any human being. They are all have died. And then he was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is it possible that these all become resurrected? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him die for 100 years and then brought him back to this world and asked him to look at your food and look at your uh, mount. These are the things that you know. So there are rare cases in which people have come back to this world or as we believe in the return, in the idea of raja, that in Akhir zaman certain people, the people who are very good, the people who are very bad, will be coming back to this world to experience the victory of the party of Allah over the party of Shaitan. But generally speaking, we don't believe in the possibility of people coming back to this dunya. The main judgment, the main reward and punishment take place in the hereafter, not in this dunya. Of course, this dunya 
is very much sensitive to what we do. This is something that I always emphasize. We should know that whenever we have good intention and we, whenever we do good things, even before Akhirah, we would start seeing the results and outcomes. You don't need to wait till Akhirah and see the good reward for what you do or what good intention you have. Even in this dunya, you would start experiencing a different kind of life. Or those who do mischief, those who forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those also before the day of judgment would start suffering deep in their hearts. But the main, the final, the eternal judgment would be done on the day of judgment. There is no doubt about this. So, as we said, the Quran very much emphasizes on this concept of the resurrection in different ways and different names. You have resurrection, you have Yawmul Qiyamah, the day that we will all be resurrected and we will all stand again before God the Almighty, or the day of judgment, Yawmul Jaza, Yawmul Deen, Malik Yawmuddin, Deen means here Jaza, means that we would be judged and rewarded or punishment. Yawmul Taqabun, when people would regret for whatever they have done, even if they have done good, still they would regret what they didn't do more. And Yawmul Hasra, again, when people become remorseful, different names, but talking about the same reality. So let's see today what is the reality of death from a Quranic perspective. Some people had the problem in understanding the concept of death. And the Quran speaks on occasions about the people who thought that death means that our body is damaged, is destroyed, and then because our reality is made up by our body, then it would not be possible to be resurrected. So they had this problem. For example, in Surah Sajda, number 10 and number 11. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Wa qalu, a'idha zalalna fil ard, a'inna lafi khalqin jadid. They said, if we are lost on the earth, it means that when we die, then our body is damaged, for example, it becomes soil and then becomes, for example, plants and eaten by animals. So it's all scattered and separated and we are lost. You cannot find the people in the same place that they were buried. They are scattered and spread out. So they say, Are we when we are lost? in a new creation. It means that how is it possible after we f are finished, then again we are created. Look at their mentality, look at their understanding. Their understanding is that we are finished, then Allah is going to create us again. This was their understanding. And this is wrong, because if we are finished, if we are absolutely zero, and then Allah creates again, this would not be the same thing. If there is no continuity, it would not be the same thing. It would be two similar things, not exactly the same thing. What we believe is that we never perish. And human spirit, which is the main identity and main reality of us, 
is always there to make sure that this is the same person. If you were just body and body is lost and then Allah creates a new human body, this will not be the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ هُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّهِمْ كَافِرُونَ First of all, Allah says, these people do not have question, real question of understanding. This is really a problem that they don't believe in the fact that they meet the Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the right answer. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكَّلَ بُكُ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ Tell them that you will not be finished. The angel of death will receive you completely. This concept of tawaffi is a very important concept in the Quran. And this concept is used 14 times in the Quran, in this sense. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, death is a matter of receiving your soul. So when we die, the angel of death or the angels who work under him, they receive our soul. So our reality is kept, is preserved. It's just like change of dress. You are taken from this bodily form and then we will be given a new body, which is the body suitable for the life after death. And what we call it in Islamic philosophy, we call it badane methali, means a kind of body which is more abstract than the physical body. But it's not a still fully abstract. So it's like a kind of semi-abstract body in contrast to the body that we will have after the judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell them that the angel of death will receive you completely and then you will be returned to your Lord. So this concept of tawaffi is very important. And it is mentioned in other places, as I said, in 14 places. I would like to mention two more verses of the Quran. And this will help us to understand how this is viewed from a Quranic perspective. One verse is about death and sleep. You know, death and sleep both are very much mysterious. This is obvious, but also is to sleep and then to become awake is very much mysterious. How it happens that we go to sleep, we know some maybe physical or psychological aspect of it, but still it's something very mysterious, especially then to have dream and to have true dreams. Sometimes people, you know, during dream, they see things which are going to happen in future. And there is no physical explanation for that. How you can have a dream of something which has not yet happened and it's only had to happen in future? Or a dream about something which has happened in another place? So in your dream you find out, for example, that some of your friend or relative has had some accident. And you didn't have any news about that. These two are mysteriously related to each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zumar number 42, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives our souls when we die. And those who have not died when they sleep. So when we sleep, it's Somehow, like when we die, it's a matter of reduction of the relation between soul and body. Of course, when we die, there is absolute, or let me not say absolute, because sometimes still relations 
remain. Like for example, you know, sometimes you have people who die, but because they were pious, still their body remains safe and sound. Because soul still has effect. But normally speaking, generally speaking, when we die, the relation is cut off between soul and body. But when we sleep, the relation is weakened, is reduced, but still there is some level of relation, and this is what keeps the body active. And the body is physically working and living. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallati lam tamut fi manamha. Allah receives the soul of the people who have not died during their sleep. Then, if we are supposed to die while we sleep, then our soul will not be sent back. If we are supposed to be given some time, some chance to live more, then our soul will be sent back. And this is why our soul can have true dream. Because when the soul is departing body, even partially, then the soul would be able to get connected to the other world, to the spiritual world, and to witness facts which are there. As long as our soul is busy with our body and running the physical activities, the soul is not possible to have that pure access. This is something that is not my subject now, but just what I wanted to say that even in this ayah, the fact is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives your soul, receives you when you die. And this shows that death is not a matter of destruction. This is like a deep sleeping. And nothing more than a deep sleep. In Surah Nisa, number 97, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَبَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ ظَالِمِ أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَضْعَفِينَ فِي الْعَرْضِ Those that angels receive them while they have been unjust to themselves. The people who have been doing zulm, injustice to themselves. When the angels receive their souls, the angels ask them, فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ where were you living? Where were you been? Why you have been unjust to yourself? Why you have been committing sins? They say, "Kunna mustadafina fil earth." We were weak people on the earth. We were people who were weak, and we were people who were not be treated fairly and freely. So we couldn't have ability to exercise our religion properly. Then the angels who say, قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسَعَةً فَتُحَاجِرُوا فِيهَا Was not the earth of Allah so wide that you could immigrate to a place that you could practice your religion or you could learn your religion? So it's not a good excuse to say that I lived somewhere that I didn't have access to Islam or I didn't have possibility to practice my religion. Again, you see here the concept of tawafi, that when people die, angels who are working with the angel of death, they receive the souls of the people. And interestingly, unlike what some people think, that some people think that when we die, then we would be in an idle situation till the day of judgment. But interestingly, as soon as we die, conversation with the angels start. So we have a life here. It's not that everything is finished, then they will start again. Immediately, conversation with, will start with the angels, and angels will ask us certain things. Of course, detailed questioning would be on the Day of Judgment. But certain questioning about the faith of the people especially would start right after the death. So 
according to the Quran, death is not destruction. Death is not to disappear. This is just like a very deep sleep, a transition to the other world in which our understanding would be even more. Our life would be even stronger. Not only will we not be in a weaker position, indeed we will be in a better position. Even the people who are not mu'min, still their understanding will be more. And this is why they can communicate with the angels. In this world, they cannot communicate. In this world, we understand only some languages. But when we die, we will all be able to communicate to the angels and listen to the angels. And as far as we believe, it would be mainly in Arabic, if not only. How a person who was not maybe aware of Arabic or informed about Arabic can have this communication in Arabic? It's because in the other world, there is no matter of limitation. Even maybe it would not be a matter of using words. Indeed, these are the meanings which are directly communicated, not necessarily words and terms. So our understanding certainly would be more. And our life would be stronger, but then it's a matter of whether we will enjoy or we will suffer. You know, the people who suffer, this is not because they don't understand. Sometimes you suffer more because you understand more. And there's a deep literature here, you know, in, uh, among Muslim uh, mystics, that the amount of suffering depends on the amount of understanding. The people who have less understanding, they have normally less pain. So you shouldn't think that whoever has, you know, uh, some painful life or bitter life is because he doesn't understand well. No, sometimes it's be in indeed because they understand they have more pain. Of course, what kind of pain? That is important. Some people understand more their limits, their pro moral problems, their lack of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they suffer more. Some people, they understand more what they could have achieved in the physical world, so they suffer more. But in both cases, it's a matter of understanding. Without understanding, there would be no chance of talking about pleasure or pain. Maybe I will talk about this later in the next session, inshallah. So, when we die, we would be given a new life with more understanding, with a stronger life which will continue on and on till the day of judgment. But depending on what we have done, we may be suffering or we may be enjoying. We may be happy or we may be sad. And the last point I would like to mention today is that there is one verse in the Quran in which a name has been given to this world between death and the day of resurrection. Not as a name, but as a kind of expression that later Muslim scholars have used it. It became like a term. And that is Barzakh. Barzakh has been used in the Quran in several places. But there is only one place in which Barzakh is used for the universe between this dunya and akhirah. This is in Surah Mu'minun, number 110. حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون. Allah says that when some of them dies, his death comes. He says, Oh my Lord, please send me back. لعلي أعمل صالحا في ما تركت. So that I may now do good deeds, righteous acts, the things which I have not done before. Please give me another chance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, innaha kalimatun huwa Allah says, nay, there is no 
further chance. And this is what you say. If you are given another chance, you will be again the same person. وَمَنْ وَرَاءِهِمْ بَرَزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And Allah says, before them, in front of them, is a barzakh. Barzakh means interval, means gap. But here, this is used for the world between us and the Day of Judgment. Allah says, وَمَنْ وَرَاءِهِمْ بَرَزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Before them, there is a world which is connected to the Day of Judgment. In the English, you know, they have this term limbo, which may mean this, but I am reluctant to say that because sometimes, you know, in every uh, tradition, there are many things also interwoven with a concept. So we must be very careful. But something similar, you know, it's limbo, but maybe not exactly the same. So a world between this physical life and the Day of Judgment. But this world is parallel to the physical life. It's a matter of us being in the physical life or in that world. Because they come together. So while I am still in the physical world, there are many people who are in that world. So it's not something which is created after this world. It is something which is parallel to this world. And it's a matter of whether you are located in this physical world or you are transferred to that world. Indeed, we believe that even hell and heaven are right now created. But it will be fixed after the Day of Judgment. So people sometimes are in hell, sometimes are in heaven, depending on what they do. But they may change their places. When they die, depending on what they have done, they would have some fixed, not completely, some fixed situation, but it's not really fixed, because it's still depending on what people may do for them, or depending on the purification process and refining process that they go through, maybe they will become cleansed and Allah will reduce their punishment. Then. After the day of judgment, then everything would be finally decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything would be defined. Otherwise, as I said, hell and heaven are still, or uh, in a sense, you know, now they are there. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla law ta'lamuna il mal yaqeen la tarawunna al jahim. If you had the knowledge of certainty, you would have just see, we're able to see the hell. Okay, let me uh, stop here. We can have five minutes question and answer, and then, inshallah, uh, next session we will continue. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. For the sisters, there's a mic which should be on the carpet just in front of you. If we can take a question from the brothers, please. Is there a question from the sisters? Assalamu alaikum wa can, can you switch on the mic? You haven't switched on the mic. There is a switch on the mic. Yeah. Uh, when you are in the middle uh, stage, yeah. um, are you being punished at that time or not? Um, does that depend also on your amals? Um, you know, lots of times that uh, I've heard that you, uh, um, they will be like, um, there will be uh, different animals that will come in actions and they will say, this is your namaz or this is your gibbat or whatever. Yeah. As soon as someone dies, Depending on what kind of person he or she was, he would be treated differently. It's not that people would be, as I said, in an idle situation, and then everything starts after the resurrection. 
There is a famous hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which the Prophet is quoted as saying, "Al qabru means the grave is either rosatun min riyadh al jannah or hufratun min hufar al niran." is either a garden of the gardens of heaven or a hole in the of the holes of the hell you know apparently hell is like different holes and you know with fire and people are put in different holes so depending on our faith depending on our practices on our character either we are going to enjoy right after death or we are going to uh, suffer of course some people have the idea that the people some of our ulama have the idea that the people who are just in the middle who are average people it's possible that they may be in a state of like a sleep and they will not even you know enjoy or even suffer but the people who are good very good the people who are very bad immediately their reward and punishment will start and this is something which must makes us more motivated to work because uh, this period is a long period we don't know how many years is going to take and uh, also the hope that we have for the intercession of the Ahlul Bayt uh, is sometimes you know not helping in that period of course uh, in some aspect it helped but not necessarily because for example uh, there is a hadith uh, from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in which Imam says that the intercession would be after the in, uh, resurrection and you must do something for your barzakh. Of course, as I said, in some senses it helps the love for Ahlul Bayt, the love for the Prophet, and good deeds certainly would help, but uh, it's mostly what we do that helps, not something that just we hope or something that you, know, you desire. It's a matter of what really we have achieved. And no one would be able to help us. It's only ourselves and what we have done which would help us may Allah inshallah protect all of us from the pains and sufferings of death and after death inshallah do we have a final question from the brothers assalamu alaikum sheikh assalamu alaikum um, sheikh i just wanted to ask you um during the Barzakh period, um, that's uh, you said people can get cleansed, can get purified, yeah? So say someone who lived uh, many years back during the time of, let's say, Prophet Ibrahim, um, and uh, he had similar deeds to someone who lived now, does that mean he had a longer, longer time to get cleansed? Because he was further away from the Day of Judgment? Um. You know, these two words which are parallel, their time span is not the same. So for example, if in this physical world you can talk about, for example, first millennium, second millennium, third millennium, before or after, for example, Christ, in that world you don't have the same timing. Because that is not a physical world. That is not where there are, you know, there's moon and sun and you know this kind of day and night. It has its own timing. Okay. And when would be the resurrection? There would be no timing because that's eternality, it's eternity. So there is some kind of timing, but timing of its own nature, not timing of this world. So you cannot say that if someone dies today and another person dies ten years later. So the first person is living in Barzakh 10 more years. It's not like this.
that's all the questions we have time for today. Thank you very much for those of you that asked questions. Can we have a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad? Allah.